The Volkswagen Group owns 30% of Gaucheron High Tech and 20% of battery company QuantumScape. Both Gaucheron High Tech and QuantumScape have been working on solid state batteries. But recently, Gaucheron High Tech, who manufacture some pretty impressive lithium ion phosphate batteries, they have revealed their new or the new solid state battery technology, which will actually begin being produced at a rate of two gigawatt hours per year, which is actually quite a lot of batteries. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. Volkswagen back Chinese battery maker Goshan High Tech. They announced they have developed their all solid state Jinshi battery and it's entered pilot scale production. The company started design work for a two gigawatt hour mass production line, marking a step toward large scale industrialization of solid state battery technology in China. Goshan High Tech just tried to build a, a mega battery factory in the United States. They bought the location, built the factory, and got all the permits in place. Then the town where this factory was, they fought back. They sacked the mayor who approved the factory, and they said to Goshan High Tech, no, not in our town. Now, this factory would have given literally thousands of jobs to the locals, but they decided they didn't want it. Anyhow, the Jinshi battery, developed over eight years, was first unveiled in May of 2024. It uses a sulfide-based solid electrolyte, says Car News China, and features several material innovations, including micronized electrolytes, ultra-thin coated single crystal cathodes, and three-dimensional mesoporous silicon anodes. According to Goshan, the cell has an energy density of 350 watt hours per kilogram. So that means it's got about 40% higher energy density than NMC batteries and approximately 50% higher energy density than lithium ion phosphate. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, there is no batteries currently in production in an EV with that energy density of 350 watt hours per kilogram. Apparently, they say it's past rigorous safety tests, including a 200 Celsius thermal chamber, nail penetration, and crush tests. Now, I haven't actually heard of many companies doing those kinds of tests with their solid state batteries. Now, interestingly, Goshan High Tech already has a production line or a pilot production line, and their first 0.2 gigawatt hour pilot line achieved 100% localization of core production equipment and maintains a 90% yield rate meaning 90% of the batteries that come off that production line can be used, 10% can't be used. The company also improved the conductivity of its sulfide electrolyte by around 60% and reduced cell preload pressure by 90%. What does all that mean? Well, apparently this enhances production consistency, meaning less batteries are wasted that go down the production line. After a year of endurance validation, the battery cell capacity increased by 150% compared with earlier prototypes. Not exactly sure what that means though, but we do know the Jinshi battery's performance supports more than 3000 charge cycles, which is quite a lot for a solid state battery. And that's the biggest drawback of solid state that, um, you know, they just don't get enough charge cycles compared to other battery types. However, Goshan say that these solid state batteries will have a 1 million kilometer lifespan. Now, I don't know if that means um, down to say 70% degradation, but anyway, what, this is the longest, the longest lifespan of any solid state battery that I've heard announced so far anywhere in the world. And I've probably done maybe a hundred videos on these batteries. The pack system achieves an energy density of 280 watt hours per kilogram, enabling an estimated thousand kilometer driving range per charge depending on the battery size, of course, and the size of the car, with stable performance from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's get back to those numbers for, for, to start with. One million kilometer lifespan, and the energy density is 280 watt hours per kilogram at the pack level. Normally, we don't um, talk about energy density at the pack level, 
But to give you some context here, the rematch Navirus electric supercar, it has 165 watt hours per kilogram energy density at the pack level. And the new Ferrari electric supercar, they say, has 190 watt hours per kilogram energy density at the pack level. And Ferrari say that means it's the highest energy density battery at the pack level of any car in the world. So this would go from 190 from Ferrari, which obviously no one can really buy, except for a very select few people, to 280 watt hours per kilogram. In other words, it's a big jump. Prototype vehicles equipped with the cells have already completed more than 10,000 kilometers of on-road testing. But that would suggest to me there's still a lot more testing to go. And I wouldn't expect to see these batteries on the market for probably another year. Goshan has not disclosed the investment amount or construction timeline for the upcoming two gigawatt hour production line, which would be massive. But analysts is estimate a cost of around 250 million US dollars per gigawatt hour based on comparable semi-solid battery projects. And the company is aiming for small scale vehicle integration by 2027 and mass production by 2030. That seems feasible. I think that's realistic. Volkswagen does have an advantage here. The fact that they own 30% of this company um, could mean that um, they can use these batteries before anyone else. Very likely, in fact, that they will. Plus, they can also use factorial solid-state batteries, seeing as they own 20% of that solid-state battery company as well. So basically, the Volkswagen Group can just pick or choose whichever one they think is best. It'll be interesting to see which one makes it to market first. It's kind of a race between those two companies, not just the, between those two, but between many others. But here's the other thing. Companies like Porsche, they're in trouble. I mean, their sales are going down. Their profits are crashing. But Porsche could have a bit of a revival if they were the first company to bring out solid-state batteries. Imagine if Porsche said, our new Taycan, our new Macan, our new SUVs have solid-state batteries with more than 1,000 kilometers of range. Imagine the demand for Porsche's SUVs in that luxury sector. They would then have a, a, a way to differentiate themselves. Right now, there's not really a big difference between a Porsche EV and other ones, yeah? But this would give them that, that kind of difference. You know, Porsche's always, always had a difference with their engines. They're different and better than others, but they don't when it comes to batteries and range. This would change everything for them. Goshan is collaborating with Ehang, a Chinese EV toll, you know, flying car developer, to apply solid state battery technology to its low altitude aircraft. So, what do you guys think? How do you see this playing out? I mean, obviously the Volkswagen Group is facing some massive challenges, but this could be a little kind of potential trump card for them. Let me know your thoughts. And also, let me know what you think about eventually, I'd say within a few years' time, many higher-end EVs will have solid-state batteries. Would you pay an extra 20000 to double the range of your EV? That's what you could do. That's going to be possible. Is it worth it? going from, say, 600, 500 kilometers of range to double that figure. Is that something that would interest you if it costs, say, $20,000? Let us know in the comments. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now, I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code, and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.